Pagan Circus, the show of shows. In Sydney, Christine Hagen has thrown herself into the shadow of the law by helping her former lover, the unscrupulous but fascinating Grant Andrews, escape from the police. Louis Little, the curious dwarf with the circus, is involved in this complication, and when, after a quarrel, John Hagen dismisses him, Little knows his true feelings. Declaring he knows the truth about Christine's guilt, he tells John Hagen that the price of his silence is a continuance with the circus. That same day, Christine is talking over her unhappy situation with Dr. Playford, when a loud hello downstairs announces the fact that Annie Weatherwax, lovable but eccentric proprietor of the guest house where the Hagens are staying, is back from hospital. Hello there. Where is everybody? Come on, Christine. Let's go down. It sounds as though Annie's coming up. I felt a lot of good. It was my warning her about climbing stairs. Oh, so there you are, Dr. Haywood. And Christine. Hello, Annie. So you're back. Back home and far from broke. Burn me, did that rest in that hospital do me good. <laughs> for two pins, I'd do a couple of handsprings round this room right now. <laughs> Annie, for heaven's sake. <laughs> oh, what's the matter with you? You look about as cheerful as a one-armed traffic cop with the hives. Listen, Annie, calm down, will you? You're a sick woman. Ah, sick, my foot. I tell you, I've never felt better in my life. I've lost ten years in that hospital. Ten years and fifty pounds. But they wouldn't charge that for two days. Who said anything about charges? I lost that money playing poker. Never heard worse cards in my life. Do you know something, Dr. Haywood? Those women in that ward were nothing but cheats and swindlers. What do you mean? Well, they said that they didn't know how to play. Had me teaching them, mark you. Oh, me teaching them. They could have taught me for five years and I still wouldn't have been anywhere near their standard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it served you right. Oh, cheats and swindlers. Do you know what the nurses found when they made up my bed? What? Three aces and two kings under the mattress. <laughs> no wonder they all held such good hands. They were getting them from under the blankets. Now, I tell you... And I'll tell you something, Annie. You were a thorough disgrace to that hospital. They'll never have you back there again. <laughs> oh, I should worry. <laughs> well, it's a miserable place anyway. <laughs> you know what, Christine? They wouldn't even let the patient sing. I should think not. Not the songs you choose for them. Oh, I heard all about it from the matron. Barnacle Bill and rolled out the barrel. Well, <laughs> what of it? They're good songs. What's more, it's broadened their outlook. Old Bessie Trainer told me that she'd never had such a wonderful stay in hospital in her life. And who's Bessie Trainer? Oh, a funny old duck. Uh, sort of a, a nurse governess to the Walton Smith family. Never heard of them. No, that's because you're a country bumpkin. Give me a cigarette, somebody, please. Annie, Annie. Now listen, Dr. Haywood. I'm an old woman with few pleasures left in life. An occasional puff is one of them. And I'm not stopping it for you or all of the rest of the BMA put together. <laughs> what do you say, Doctor? Uh, all right. Let her go ahead and kill herself. Here you are, Eddie. Thanks. Oh, oh that's good. <sighs> now, now, where was I? Oh, yes, yes, the Walton Smiths. They're one of the richest Sydney families, and, uh, oh, they're very odd. Uh, do you mean to say that you've never heard of them? No. Well, it's easy to see that you're not a Sydney cider. If you're lucky, you might catch a fleeting glimpse of them. Uh, they live around here somewhere. Money in the cross. Burn me, no! They've got one of those big old homes still left in Elizabeth Bay. It stands back in a big garden with trees, and there's a high wall all around it. It's... It's crowded in on all sides with blocks of flats. It's a wonder they don't move. Well, it it seems that Grandpa Walton Smith came over with the, with the first fleet or something, and, and the governor gave the family acres of land down there at the bay. Uh, Lady Walton Smith won't budge from the place for that very reason. And uh, what does her husband say? Nothing. 
He's been underground these past five years. No, there's only Lady Walton Smith and her son. Nice-looking hunk of man, too, called Tony. About 25 or 6. Drives around in a car so long that it blocks traffic every time it stalls. <laughs> what it is to be the idle rich. Oh, good luck to them, I say. Personally, I wouldn't change places with any of them. Well, never mind about those blue bloods. Come on now, let's think about ourselves for a change. How's the circus? Oh, everything's running very well, Annie. It's going to be quite a gala opening on Saturday. I hope you've kept some seats for me. Two of the best in the house. We thought you might want to bring somebody. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I might at that. Uh, what are you doing with yourself on Saturday night, Dr. Hayward? I? Uh, nothing. Oh, yes, you are. You're taking me to the circus. Why? Because it's not respectable for a woman of my age to be going out alone. That's why. Don't look so sour about it. You won't even have to put your hand in your pocket. Oh, it's not that. Well, if you're too lazy, then we'll have a private car. But uh, I thought you uh, didn't like my company. I don't. I think you've got the disposition of a sour lemon. But burn me, you are my personal physician, aren't you? And I've got a very weak heart. But you just said... Never mind what I said. Dr. Haywood, you're coming to the circus on Saturday with me, and that is that. Well, now, I'm going to get the girls to make me a cup of tea. It'll be ready in ten minutes, if you're thirsty. Well, devil take me. Of all the extraordinary women. <laughs> and just what are you laughing at, young lady? <laughs> Watch yourself, Doctor. I noticed a very strange glint in Annie's blue eyes. So you just watch yourself very carefully. What's the time, Jim? I make it about um, oh, a few minutes to one, Mr. Hagen. Well, then stick up those papers and we'll get back and have some lunch. Very well. And, uh, Jim, there's just one other thing before we leave the lot. It's about that dwarf, Louis Little. Yes, we had a very unpleasant interview this morning. So unpleasant that I think the best thing we can do is to forget it ever happened. But, Mr. Hagen... What went on in this van this morning must be kept absolutely between ourselves. I don't want a single word of it mentioned, even to Gail. Very well, Mr. Hagen. If you say so, it's all right with me. I'm telling you this, my boy because I've learned to trust you like one of my own family. I want you to respect that trust. Come in. Ah, oh, what is it, Peterson? May I just come, Mr. Hagen? Mm, quite a stack, too. Yeah. You notice how some of it's just addressed to Hagen Circus, Sydney? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's pretty good, boss. Shows that people know where we are. <laughs> they should after the money I've spent on posters all over the city. Oh, all right, Peterson. Let Mr. Cameron have the mail. We'll sort it out for you. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you. See you later. Well, I'd better run through these before we leave, I think. It won't take me a moment. All right, I'll just tidy up. I say. Well? Here's a letter for the dwarf. Marked urgent. Hmm. I wonder if Little is still on the lot. Mm, I couldn't care less. But he's probably gone home for lunch. And then we can take this letter back home with us and slip it under his door. I'd rather do that than hand it to him personally. Somehow, I don't feel I could talk to Louis Little. Just at the moment. Hello, Dad. Oh, hello, Chris. Not down to lunch? Lunch is late. Annie came back from hospital this morning and turned the whole place upside down. Hello, Christine. What, 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 what's all this about Annie? Oh, it seems she's back home. Oh, good. Well, um, I'm going to take off my coat and wash up. Uh, do you mind if I leave it here? I'll be back in a moment. Uh, you weren't over at the lot this morning, Chris. No, I was lazy, Dad. But I'll come back with you this afternoon. Johnny! Johnny boy! 
do you mean by not being here to welcome me home? Oh, now, Annie, you forget I've got a circus to run. Well, what about that boyfriend of Gale's? I thought he was taking over. He is, and he is doing it very well. But he can't handle the whole show. Well, not right from the jump. Particularly with the Sydney opening on Saturday. Well, let me look at you, Johnny. <laughs> do I pass? No, you don't. You look tired and worried. There's a lot of fresh lines on your face. Do you know what, Johnny? I think you could do with a few days rest in a hospital. Rest? What, at a time like this? Why, don't be silly, Annie. Well, you asked me. Oh, if I look tired, it's because I've got a big job on my hands. After the opening, I'll be able to take it easier. Well, just see that you do. A fat lot of good it is entertaining the public if you kill yourself over it. You'll get no statue in the public square that way. Annie, about the only thing that's likely to kill me is lack of food. What about lunch? There won't be any lunch until we get the gas stove alight. What's the matter with it? No matches. Oh, Annie. What happens to all the matches I buy, I wouldn't know. I think the girls must eat them. And now the local shops run out of them, too. So I've come up here to borrow some. <laughs> I've got a lighter. Oh, uh, why, Jim's got some matches. I remember he put them in his pocket over there oh. on the lot. In his coat pocket? Yes, uh, take a look. Just a moment. <sighs> no. No, the only thing I can find is this letter. Yes, it came over to the lot addressed to Louis Little. Jim brought it back to put under the... Chris, is anything the matter? No. But you were staring at that envelope with the, the honest expression on your face. Yes. You see, I recognise this handwriting. Is that so strange? Yes, it's the handwriting of someone I know very well. Grant Andrews. <laughs> Can this definite connection between Grant Andrews and Louis Little help the Hagans in their problems? Follow this interesting serial and learn more of this fascinating family in the next episode of Hagen Circus, written by Max Afford.